hey what's going on guys so in this video i know it's uh, after a long time i'm going to post a video and in this video we are going to build up a venom stack or maven stack application and in which we'll be dealing with authentication and we'll be using view.js as front-end framework and we'll be using vuex for the state management and basic stuff with the bootstrap styling a little bit as well as on the backend side we are going to use mongo daemon express and node.js in order to uh, create a uh, serve it as an api so let's get started so currently i'm in my home directory and i'm going to navigate to my web directory and if i ls over here currently i have these many projects going on so i'm gonna create one more directory which will be calling maven stack because we are using mongodb express view.js and node.js so let's go and create simply so mkdir maven stack and cd maven stack clear and if i ls it's currently a, an empty directory nothing in there so let's go and create our project please so to create a project i'll simply write npm in it and it will take you through the wizard where simply it will ask for certain questions so for the package name maven stack is fine version is okay description simple web application to handle authentication with view.js and entry point you can go for the index.js but i like to go for the app.js so i'm creating app.js app.js that's command is fine get repository that's okay keywords that's all right author name i'll put my name and you can put yours license mit and it will ask okay and yes so once it is done in now if i ls currently i have this it will create a packet.json file in the directory so to open up this video uh, open up this in code editor you can use atom for atom you can write it atom dot atom period but i would like to open it in vs code so i will write code and period so this will open up the project in the visual studio code and here it is so currently in my packet.json it's basically the simple thing which we have just done now second thing i'm gonna i'm gonna go back to my terminal and i will write i will start my mongodb sermon so for that i'll write mongo and it will start my mongod one server on the uh, as a database service and i can use this mongo shell by writing mongo and it will start the shell so let's go and get back to the project so currently i'm just clearing it out nothing to wor worry about and we'll go and create the api first and in the second part we are will be starting with our front end so as we are in our root or directory and the main file which we are going to use will be app.js so we have to create that and i am just opening visual studio code terminal by just pressing control um, by pressing control and back text that will open up the terminal in the visual studio code this is integrated terminal and highly handy so to create a file with the name app uh, with the name and extension of app.js we have to simply write touch command and that is touch app.js and it will create a file for us in app.js so currently we are just ignore this thing we don't need we don't need to worry about and now to start with our application to spin up the server as well as to handle our apis so i'm going to quickly install a couple of dependencies in order to spin up our server as well as deal with some api stuff so for that i'm simply going to write a couple of commands and first one is npm install express 
bcrypt js passport and passport jwt because we'll be handling our tokens then json web token in order to assign a new token mongoose in order to connect with our database then we need body parser in order to handle json responses then course module in order to uh, respond to cross origin request and one more dependency i'm gonna install that is concurrently uh, which we'll be using later in order to spin up server as well as a client server as well as front-end server and that's basically it so it will take a couple of time and i'm gonna quickly pause this video and once it is done so all our dependencies are installed successfully and it has been well added to my uh, packet.json file and dependencies key and now i'm simply gonna and it has also created a node modules folder which which has all the dependencies in there and whatever we want to use in our application we can bring it from there so that's basically it for now and now i'm gonna quickly go to the app to start working with our server so first dependency which i'll be bringing to spin up server is express obviously that is require express then second one is Mong mongoose to connect with our database that will require mongoose and then const body parser that will require body parser then we'll be also using const path module and don't worry we haven't installed this thing so and this we, we do not need to install at all we just have to bring it here then next one is const course equal to require course module and we have brought in all the dependencies whatever we need for now then we have to initialize the app so we need const app equals to express and we have initialized the app successfully then we are gonna define some middlewares middlewares and for middlewares we are gonna simply say app.choose and first middleware is body parser dot url encode it and it will take a key extended equals to false since we can deal with our application in like uh, other formats not only json we want to if we want to interact with form data we can simply send that form data over here then second uh, then another middleware in order to handle with our json data so we'll simply write body parser dot json and that's all next middleware which we'll be using is course module app.use course and we are done with the middlewares then we want to apply path module so to apply path module we we'll simply write app.use express and i'll tell you what we are gonna do in this and our name okay path dot join their name comma and we will simply say public so this piece of code is simply saying whatever we have as a public folder will be our static directory so we are setting this static directory of this application as a public folder and don't worry it can be many like if you have something like uploads folder we can simply set that that also as a static directory by just line writing uploads but for now i'm not gonna use that thing so i'm going to delete this folder and um, 
static directory course middleware then this body middleware form data middleware and now we are just simply gonna create a couple of folders over here in order to provide a better structure to our application so first folder which I'm gonna create is models then the second folder which we'll be creating is config and whatever the configuration of this application will be will go in here then um, yeah, I'm going to create one more folder that is in the root of the application that will be routes and whatever the routes of this application will be will be going in this directory so I'm gonna create another folder in here that will be API and I'm gonna quickly create another file here that is users.js because we are simply going to work with the authentication stuff, registering the user, logging it out and all the stuff. So next thing, I'm gonna quickly ex uh, close this stuff and I'm gonna create one file which is very important that is keys.js and here I'm gonna simply module dot exports which will be equal to mongo URL and it is just exporting an object and which will contain our MongoDB database so MongoDB local host and that is port 27017 and after you just specify the name of the database so in this maven auth application will fill with name of a database then we can write some secret so here your secret what do we feel like you can put in over here so this is the object which we are going to export from this keys.js file. So to connect with our database, we are just going to bring in that file. And in order to bring in that file, we need to write a couple. Bring in the database configuration. So we'll simply say mongoose dot connect and it takes an object so for now we are simply saying const db equal to require and which is in the same directory in config folder keys and we want to bring in the mongo uri so we have brought in and now this argument will take this db and with a callback and with one more parameter in there use new URL parser that will be true and then it will give a callback function which we can map it through then method and we can simply say console dot log and I'm gonna use backticks database connected success fully fully and I'll write db and if the, if in case of any error we are writing catch block um, which will throw an error object so I'm simply write console.log error 
unable to connect the, the database and I'm simply writing this thing over here so this is basically the callback of this function uh, better to make it on a separate line so I'm quickly so that it might look quite better and that's basically it database now what I'm gonna do is to quickly go and create another file and my configuration uh, not now that won't be a good idea so for now I'm gonna quickly say app.listen spin up the server over here and that will be const equal to 5000 and process.env dot port and app will take this argument that is port and give a callback console.log server started on port and I'll write port over here and I'm going to use the CS6 and let's go and quickly test it out so to spin up to spin up the server or this application we need a couple of things first but for basic we can start node app.js and say and everything is fine so now if I head over to the Google Chrome and new window over here and if I write localhost 8000 oh not 8000 it will be 5000 and it will say cannot get and that is just because we haven't yet initialized any routes so it is looking for this app.get and let's say it will take two objects in here request response and rest.send return rest.send let's say I can write in tag over here that is closing HTML tag hello world and now if I save and now if I reload we still won't be able to see it that is just because each time we update this file we need to break the server and then start it again and now you'll say this kind of this is kind of pain in the butt so for that I need you to install a, one more dependency that is called nodemon and you can write npm install dash g nodemon and up and sudo when you are using macintosh or linux but in my case I am already using nodemon so I am simply write nodemon dash dash version and it will give me the nodemon version which I am using so now to spin up the server I will simply write nodemon and it will constantly wash our application and in case of any changes it will automatically restart the server for us so now if I go and just see we are able to see this hello world text over here and since this is a backend API so we are not going to do this and I'm gonna simply just comment this line of stuff and I'm gonna quickly create this route go to this users file so what do we need to do over here but before going to this route I want to create a model and model is something 
that deals with the database. So I'm going to simply say user. In my models directory, I'm going to create a file that is called user with capital U. And that will be a model. So what are the basic need, basic things which we are going to use in our whatever the attributes we want about a user we can specify over here which will automatically create and validate our data according to that model. So we are simply going to require mongoose const mongoose and we are bringing mongoose again. So did I spell it wrong? No, it's fine. Then I'm gonna create a schema object which is mongoose.schema. Then create the user. User model or schema. So for that, we can simply write const user schema equal to new schema and it will take a couple of things. So let's say we want name of the user which will be of type string and with S capital required will be true then we want username type will be again a string so i can simply copy this stuff out and just paste it over here then email we want password in order to secure login and we want a date field and that will be of type date and by default option default it will be date dot now now so we have successfully created our user schema and now we want to export this object so we'll simply write module dot exports equal to user equal to mongoose dot model and it will take two parameters so first one is users table this is the name of collection which we are going to use or collection or document which we will be using uh, which references to this user schema so once that is done and uh, we are all set to do go for the user's route so the file next file which we have created is the users api file and in order to use this thing we want to create a couple of routes over here in order to use them so let's go and quickly create that thing for us so first thing which we need to bring in over here obviously is express router so that we can use that thing so we are gonna use const express that is require express then we want to since this is a sub route so we are bringing router and that is nothing but express dot router um, now we have defined this router over here so now next one is we want to bring in couple of other things to other things also so for now we crypt in order to hash our passwords JS. then we also need JWT which will require later in order to hash our password and for now yeah one more thing that is passport passport that will be required in order to protect our routes 
passport that's fine for now and before doing anything I almost forget all the time so quickly export that router now I'm gonna quickly write some description so first one is activate route that we get uh, not get that will be post because we are just simply sending some data to the here and which will be API users slash register the second one is the description DSC register the user and third one is access time so that will be public so first route that is router dot post and that is register which will take request response and now here we are going to get a couple of things so let first of all I'm gonna do a couple of uh, something called object destructuring so request a body and whatever the things we want to bring in from here so first one will be the name second field will be the username then email password then we also need something called confirm password so we are just taking out from the request body object we are taking out these variables so that you can we can use this and let me quickly check in the model if we have something else which we haven't mentioned and one two three four and that's fine yeah so first condition that will be if request dot uh, request password not equal to equal to confirm password so we'll simply return a request return response to the status of 400 that is And the better way to do this is firstly with a message password do not match so we are simply sending this response now in else case what we are going to do nothing else so we have defined this user over here um, but we haven't used this so we need to bring in user and I'll tell you why we are bringing this require which is to up and the models directory that is user so we have brought in this user object now we are going to check for the unique email and that's how we are gonna do so for now we'll find the some user find and we'll pass this find one we we'll pass this username with this username which we have already got in here and this will return an user collection user data and if user is there then we'll simply say we'll simply return this response back with the message of username is already taken then not for the unique email, that will be 
user name check for the unique email so we are simply find one we are passing a query over here that is email if matches to this email then we are getting some user if, if user is found again we'll simply send this data back email is already registered password now next thing then if nothing goes wrong if everything is fine till here then next thing is it will that means the data is valid and now we can register the user so now how we are gonna do that if you remember in the last videos uh, it's very simple we can simply say let new user equal to new user and this name username password email and that's all I guess yeah for now that's all yeah just simply passing all the stuff to here and now we are going to hash our password password and for hashing a password we have brought in this generate uh, bcrypt so we can hash our password using this bcrypt over here so for that bcrypt dot hash uh, not hash gen salt first and it will take 10 first one is 10 and if in case of error or hash not error this will take this salt then everything goes fine big rip dot hash now we are hashing the password new user the password and with a salt parameter in there and if hash is successful it will return error either error or hash if error throw error else new user dot password will be hash whatever is hashed we are assigning it to the new user new user dot save and once it is saved then it will give a callback we can catch it to then and that is a user object it will return back the user object from there return press dot json and with a status of 201 uh, with a created resource and in here I'm gonna say success equal to true message message I'm using
I just start Okay, that's fine for now. And trailing semicolons, and that's all. So we have created this route so far, but we haven't done implemented this route over here. So now bring it in the bring in the users route. And for that, we can do a const users equal to require. And we are going to route directory API slash users. So next one is app.use for API slash users. Users. And now if I save, should go fine so let's me quickly test this out so for testing purpose I am using postman which I have installed and it's a really nice tool you can find it on a from postman website and documentation is very amazing and its performance is also very amazing it will take a little bit of time to load and here it is so now Okay, so uh, since it is a post request and port is running on 5000, localhost 5000 API user slash register. And in a body, we are going to use raw data. That is plain application. Username is and a And day one and password is equal to one two three four five six seven eight nine zero and let me quickly make this make some error in order to before registering our data and since he has a mongo shell running over here show db We have these many database over here, but currently the database which I'm which I was going to use was Maven Auth, and which is not over here at all. So let's go and quickly create that database. And unlike my SQL, we don't have to create all the tables manually. MongoDB will do it for us. So we just have to use that thing. So let's say email. Here is my email marianarain09 at gmail.com. And we have one more thing that was name Narain Maria. And I know I here I have accept accepted this also from password which I'm not sending and that definitely gonna give me errors. So that is good for us in order for testing purpose. And if I make this request, we are getting password to not match. So let me quickly um, create confirm password. Confirm password. And that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's say we are again sending wrong. And that is some error in there. And my terminal should also crash. Yeah, everything is fine. Now if I send, password is still do not match and user is not registered. So now if I send, it should create our database. So now if I write show DBs, here we have maybe not. Our database is created. So use that 
Maven Art and show collections and it has users collection in there so in order to show we all the documents in that users collection you have to simply write users.find.pretty in order to make it nicely presentable and here whatever we have sent we have created over here so that's basically it about the login register route now in the next next thing is we are simply gonna create our login route and I'm gonna copy this header which will be post API login and it is also accessible to the public so here comes the couple of fishy things so router dot and since it is a post request login and that will be request response and here we want to do something user dot find firstly we are find one we are finding that user by the username and dot body dot user name because we are simply accepting that username from the from the login request and if there is user it will give a callback if not user then return press dot json with a status of four of four not found message username is not found success will be true not true it will be false and this will be a kind of good thing but if there is user if there is user so we are now going to compare the password password so in order to compare the password we have to bring in again the bcrypt.js which we have already brought in and we just need to use them. so bcrypt dot compare and it will take the password which we have brought and the body of the body of the request and it will take user which we are getting from here user password and now it will give a callback is match if is match is true that means users password is correct and we need to Send the JSON token for that user. Else, we will simply return this response. And correct password. So how we are gonna sign that token so I'm quickly gonna create a, a variable that is called payload and that payload is an object and in which it will have a UID which we use a dot underscore ID then name 
user.name and this user is whatever the user we found it over here then email user.email and the most prior thing that is username user.username and with all that we have initialized this payload data which we are going to sign in our attach in our token so next thing is how to sign that token so remember we have already brought in that JWT package and we are now going to use that package in order to sign the token for the user so for that there's a sign method in that and which is, which takes a couple of so first one is payload then it also takes the key and we haven't brought the key over here so for that we need to bring in the key and if you remember in our in our configuration we have the secret that is the key so i'm gonna quickly bring in that const key equal to require and that is one up two up and in our configuration folder in keys and we wanna get this and is there something wrong? Right? Yeah, it's no, it's keys. Okay, that secret. Yeah, we are bringing that secret as a key. So now we we are just passing that key over here in order to that that is like some unique standard of that JWT. It can be a long text or a small text, whatever you feel like up like on your application. And next argument takes is expires in which is for a week is six zero four eight double zero and that's all and once this token is assigned it will give a callback or the token if in case of any error press the status that is 200 the JSON and we are sending success equal to true then token equal to token and this is not only the token I'm gonna quickly wrap it in the beer and I'm gonna sign beer with a space so this is a standard and with a message variable in there with a message hooray you are now logged in and that's all so let me go and quickly test this route so i go back to this postman and yeah that's fine it will work so I'm just quickly gonna change this line to this login and send this and here we have our BR token. So now if I copy this token and go to this website that is jwt.io and if I paste that token over here, here we have all the data in there as a payload. And we can use that data in our front end to specify the unique user. And we can also get to know which user has logged in. So last but not least, we are simply gonna create one more route that is protected route. So router dot get and this is profile. And quickly, quickly change the headers profile return the user's data and this is private route now we can attach middleware in order to protect this route that is passport middleware authenticate it takes JWT method as well as session equals to false 
and take request response and no I think it is gonna crash that's because we haven't used this password yet in our application and let me quickly fix that out so to use the passport middleware what we can do use the passport middleware uh, I quickly make some spaces make some room for app to breathe and we can say app dot use passport dot initialize and we are we broke our application over here and how in the world why is this application broke so the reason behind is we haven't uh, we have initialized the passport but we are not able to we haven't proper configuration of that passport in order to work in our application so to do that we have to simply go to this config folder and I'm gonna create one more folder file in there that is that is passport.js and I am gonna create a couple of methods in order to use that passport strategy so I'm gonna bring in JWT strategy equal to require passport JWG dot strategy so we are bringing first function then we are need to extract JWT equal to require I know most of you guys should would be knowing this stuff but this is for those extract JWT for those who want to and we are simply bringing const mongoose and I think we don't need mongoose over here we are simply gonna use const user which is user schema which we have already defined in models and users next one is const key in order to whatever in order to get those tokens matched with our key which we have assigned dot secret and that's basically it so first one is we are gonna create const options which is a thing but an empty object then ops dot jwt from request which will be equal to extract jwt from auth bearer token function so this method is simply going to extract all the token from the header as a bearer because uh, remember we have sent this token from here with a bearer in our uh, suffix and this is going to extract that token and decode it now then ops dot key dot secret or key equal to key so we are preparing that token and ready to be module dot exports which will be taking in a passport and I'm using error functions so passport dot use new JWT strategy will take our this ops object uh, JWT payload and it will take another 
or when that is done which will simply tell when we are done we'll do this and now we are simply finding that user so find one find by id and how now we are gonna get this id so whatever is in jwt payload is the token so jwt payload dot underscore id and then it will give a callback with a user object if the user is there then return done the null because there is no error else return done with null and false that means we haven't we were not able to match the user and in case of any error we are simply consoling log that error out and so far we have done everything but we haven't implemented this strategy so how in the world are we gonna implement the strategy so just after the initializing this passport we'll simply bring in the strategy Now dot use not use require and we are simply requiring because we are getting a global and since this passport will be sent over here and now if I save everything should work fine but it isn't and passport is now defined let me see passport or initialize okay we haven't brought in the passport const passport to require passport and now if I save everything should work fine and yes it is so now if I go to this uh, next look I create simply an next route there should be a get local host 5000 API slash users profile and in the header section I'm gonna do the right authorization and uh, whatever the token which we have got over here simply gonna copy this out and paste it and now if I send and uh, it's still sending somewhere it's crashing why it's not getting this request API slash users profile session is false passport dot add indicate did I put the route correct or not so let me quickly cancel this request once more um, why isn't it working though API slash localhost 5000 oh, oh okay okay everything was fine return we haven't done anything either return res.json that's why it was stuck I thought this step was done dot user so simply this is appending our user object over there and um, better way to do that is user request dot user and that's fine now if I send it will send me back the user from the database so that's basically it about this video and now in the next video we'll start working with our front end in our view.js so thank you guys uh, 
all right we'll see you in the next video